Can you imagine $763,000? Is that even a real number? How much do doctors in the US really make? Hello everyone, if you're new here, my name is Malki Asad, a plastic surgery resident in the US and the founder of TheMatchGuy.com, a company through which we help hundreds of applicants match into their dream specialty in the US. And in this video, we will go over the compensation of physicians in the United States. According to the Doximity Physician Compensation Report 2024, Neurosurgery is at the top earning specialties at $763,000. And the second spot after neurosurgery is thoracic surgery at $720,000 a year. Orthopedic surgery comes third at $654,000. And plastic surgery is number four at $619,000. Then comes oromaxillofacial surgery followed by radiation oncology followed by cardiology which according to this report is the highest paid internal medicine subspecialty at $565,000. Then you'll have vascular surgery, radiology, urology, followed by GI, which is the second highest paid internal medicine subspecialty at $514,000. As you can see, the majority of these top earning specialties are surgical specialties, and the two internal medicine subspecialties, GI and cardiology, among these top earners are procedural specialties because in cardiology you have a lot of procedures under the interventional cardiology or under EP and a lot of scopes under GI. Let's look now at the lowest paid specialties in the US. You will notice the lowest paid specialty according to this report is pediatric endocrinology at $217,000 followed by pediatric nephrology, pediatric rheumatology, and pediatric infectious disease. And you can see that the four lowest paid specialties are pediatric subspecialties. Common specialties that people ask about is emergency medicine and it's at $398,000 so around 400k and general internal medicine which is around $312,000 and the average compensation for family medicine is around 300k and I will leave the link for this doximity report if you want to explore it more in the description below. It's very obvious here that surgical specialties and procedural specialties lead in terms of compensation while the majority of the lowest paid specialties tend to be pediatric and primary care specialty. There is another physician compensation report from Medscape but I don't believe it to be as accurate as the Doximity one. Especially that you don't see three of the top five specialties that were on the highest paid specialties on the Doximity report you don't see them on the Medscape report, which are neurosurgery, thoracic surgery, and OMFS. But according to the Medscape report, orthopedic surgery comes first, followed by plastic surgery, cardiology, urology, and GI. Now a few things to keep in mind when it comes to analyzing these numbers. First, these numbers are before tax, and taxes take a big cut of your salary, because the highest federal tax bracket is 37%. So at certain income level, you would be paying over a third of your salary just for federal tax. You also have to think of the city and state tax, which varies from a place to another, social security and Medicare. So half of this salary might go away to taxes based on where you live. Also, these salaries are per year. So you have to divide that by 12 if you want to calculate the monthly income. Another thing to keep in mind is that these numbers are average. If you live in a rural area or a state that is not so populated because of the shortage of physicians, your salary might be way higher than if you're living in New York where there are so many physicians. So the competition and the number of available physicians might change that number. And although it's way more expensive to live in New York than in Idaho, if you're the only physician or one of very few physicians in Idaho, your salary might be way higher there compared to the populated New York. Also, the type of practice makes a huge difference on the compensation. Generally, if you're in an academic center, the salary is lower than if you're working in private practice. And finally, a very, very critical part of this salary is the number of hours you work. For example, in surgical specialties, even though you're making more money than non-surgical specialties, your work hours are usually way more than non-surgical specialties. And to make it more complicated, the work hours and lifestyle and call shifts change dramatically between the different subspecialties of each specialty. Now, another very important question that was raised in the Doximity Physician Compensation Report is how satisfied are physicians with their salary? Only 40% said that they're satisfied or very satisfied with their salary, and the rest were neutral, dissatisfied, or very dissatisfied with their salary. And as a follow-up question, Doximity asked whether physicians feel that this compensation reflects the effort and expertise required in their role. And 62% of respondents said no. So that is always something we need to keep in mind when looking at the compensation of physicians in the US is 
the amount of effort and stress that physicians endure, the years of training. Neurosurgeons go to college for four years, medical school for four years. Sometimes they take a year or two to do research before they match into neurosurgery. Neurosurgery is seven years, a fellowship is one year, and so much stress of patient responsibility during work, possibility of lawsuits, long work hours, call shifts. And as you can see by the respondents here, the majority don't believe that this compensation actually reflects that amount of expertise and effort put into that job. But as we always say, we're not here for the money. Now I would like to hear the average salary of a physician in your home country. I know it varies a lot from a country to another. So please share that in the comments below. And if you're someone applying to the match or interested in coming to the US, we help applicants like you match into residency in the US through our different services from residency advising to editing your personal statement and ERS application, helping you with interview preparation, USMLE tutoring, rotations in the US, or if you want to apply to fellowship in the US without repeating US residency, we help with all aspects related to US residency and fellowships. And I'll leave the link for all these services in the description of this video. And if you'd like to talk to our customer support team to learn more about the different services and how we can best help you, we would love to take you through this process and this consultation is fully free. You can schedule it by clicking on the link in the description below. If you find any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and share this video with your colleague who is also interested in learning about salaries in the US. Now, if you'd like to learn about the US residency journey from A to Z, make sure to click here and good luck.